everyone has found themselves having an awesome idea for a painting after seeing some awesome reference or witnessing some ass-kicking, booty-licking art. But more often than not, this wacky, fun, a goofy movie idea for a piece turns into fucking endless stress. I can honestly say that I have sweat more redoing a painting over and over again than while I was watching Uncut Gems. This is how I win. So how do you fix this? And here is where I am very pleased to tell you that you can't. Alright guys, thank you for watching the video. No, but really, you, you can't ever really fix this issue. Even with all the art skill in the world, you are bound to make mistakes as you grow and adapt. But here, I will actually give you the lowdown Straight up. facts that I have learned through the past three years of Digitally Painting that got me from my very first digital painting to the one I prepared for this video. So, if that sounds interesting to you, let's get into it, shall we? Hey, I'm Diego, and I'm here to show you mistakes you may be making and how to fix them. Because who better to tell you how to fix your art than a 17 year old? Before the tutorial, if I dare to shamelessly self-plug, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Twitch. So if you want to ask some questions or just hang out, the link to my channel along with my Instagram and Twitter will be in the description down below. And if you feel like this video helped you in having a spiritual awakening of sorts, make sure to leave a like and comment down below to keep me from parachuting without a parachute. So let's get the WD-40 and the elbow grease out and kick this video off with a question. Have you ever painted something and felt that things felt just wrong? Maybe the colors seem really, really off? Well, I'm here to tell you that you are worrying about the wrong things. Practice your values. While some of you may already know where I'm going with this, I'll quickly explain for the beginners what values are and why they are important. So, back in 1437, no, I'm, I'm, I'm playing. Values deal with how dark or light a color is when affected by light. Value is pretty much the biggest and baddest principle you'll be applying in a painting since color relies on value, not the other way around. For instance, Take a look at this apple. Now, if we slide on over the saturation down to zero, you'll notice that in a weird way, you still perceive it as being a red apple. Why? That's beauty, baby. Easy, right? Well, the practical thing to do to practice value, as I'm doing in this painting, is to start painting in grayscale more often. Now, I'm not trying to prevent you from having your super wacky fun time with colors. Quite the opposite, actually. The more your values look correct, the more you can just say fuck it and go balls to the wall with colors and start worrying about big boy things such as color zones, ambient tones, and all that fun stuff. So practice those values. Next up, let's talk about this stinky little fella. The airbrush is a great tool to use for shading the picture you just drew, right? No, no, that, that, no that's wrong. Tons of people overuse the airbrush and end up making a gooey mess of colors and soft edges all throughout their work. Now, don't get me wrong. The airbrush is actually an awesome tool for getting some really smooth gradation down. But you shouldn't be using it every time you see a smooth blend in your reference image. Try to instead focus on big value shapes to start forming your image. This will give your paintings a ton more structure and overall appeal. And now that we have talked about shapes, I believe it is appropriate for me to go into how edges play into your artwork. But here's the thing. There's a ton of resources that explain this concept in a really easy to understand and tangible way. So. I'll give you a bit of an overview and then guide you to those better artists to learn. Sound good? Good. Edges are everywhere in your painting, but the thing you need to start understanding about edges is that they are your friend, not your enemy. Think about the shapes you made in the last step. Now let's say hypothetically you made all your edges very hard or very soft. Everything looks too uniform, doesn't it? It just looks boring. So how do you combat this? Of course, by having a mixture of soft and hard edges throughout your painting. And here's where we get more into style and what way you'll use the concept of edges depending on how your paintings are stylized. I just said style twice. Because someone painting in a style like this, three times, will of course be using a different technique than someone using a style like this. This is where waters get murky and you start getting into your own choices and technique and all that more personal stuff. But to give you the least style biased tip and how to start learning edges that look relatively realistic, is to take the value shapes that you saw in your reference and to observe how those value shapes blend into the skin. Is it a soft, slow transition or is it a fast, hard transition? Before I confuse you more, I'll, I'll, just, end, I'll just end it at saying, keep a mixture of these edges in your paintings, you know? Go hard, go soft here and there. This goes hand in hand with my tip about not overusing the airbrush. 
the more you use different types of edges to convey form or draw attention to a certain spot on the painting, the more interesting your painting will look. I will be leaving a video by Marco Bucci down in the description if you'd like to learn more in depth about this concept and how to level up your painting skill overall. Now that was a big mess of tips. So to give you something easier to digest, I'm going to give you a couple quicker tips that we can just run through. Here we go. Stop not using reference. This one's so easy and simple to implement, but it is one of my biggest pet peeves to see people try to only draw from imagination to feel challenged or because reference is cheating. This is probably one of the biggest mistakes you make that will probably dig you real deep in the pit of bad habits. References are awesome and you should use them to help you convey better art even if you're drawing a cartoon. If you take them out of the equation and you aren't experienced enough to understand all the concepts you'd need to recreate something of similar quality from your imagination, you're going to instill wrong information into your developing brain and make it that much harder to make convincing art. So use your references, please. Next up, this is one I've struggled with in the past since it can be an annoying part of the process, but clean up your pieces. Once you get everything down and blocked out and you feel the piece is starting to really come into its final stages, start cleaning things up. Even if you are painting in a messy style, make sure your painting looks purposeful in its choices and not lazy or indecisive. This is a really simple tip that should be intuitive, but since I struggled with cleaning up things myself and always forgot to, here's a reminder for y'all. A simple tip that is easy on paper but a bit harder to get into your forehead is to take a step back and start thinking in 3D. I know, thinking in 2D to get your graphical shapes in there as I told you in the beginning is great, but if you stay in 2D, you might be missing big mistakes in the perspective of the piece or simply the alignment of the features. Things that you wouldn't notice unless you were thinking about your piece as three-dimensional. These are huge mistakes that can make your piece just look like morphed and, and creepy and weird, but not in a good way. So again, very simple tip but it may be a bit hard sometimes to get an idea for perspective, and I get that as a smooth brain myself. Finally, a lot of people don't seem to understand that studying the people you like isn't a bad thing. Trying to come up with your style off just drawing and painting with no influences isn't gonna make you any cooler, but it sure as hell is gonna make you way the fuck slower at getting better and improving and learning those big, big, wow moments that you kind of need to start getting into the professional realm. It really is just restricting how fast you can learn and master the style you're looking for. So start getting into some of your favorite artists work and crack open why they're making the decisions that they are making. This step actually helped me quite a bit when I felt unhappy with the direction that all my digital work was taking. So yeah, don't believe that bullshit that says that style's natural and that you can't change it. You can have a very conscious approach to getting your style down if you so choose to. And if you're looking to improve fast, this is the best way to do so. Those are pretty much a compilation of tips that, as I said in the beginning, made me go from here to here. Hopefully they're as helpful to you as they were to me. Anyways, while we've been ranting about how to fix your art throughout the whole video, I do want to clarify that no matter where you are in your art journey, your art is great because it is yours. Nobody else is creating the same things that you are in the same way as you. So be proud to create even if you think you aren't as good as this artist or that artist. It is great to be a critical eye of your work to improve your weaknesses, but sometimes you need to really take a step back and remember that this is a road we all travel and that ultimately to make it worth traveling, you should enjoy the time you get to create and improve because what's the point of getting better if you're not having fun. Hey, you take me to